All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we're excited for you to join us uh, for our last session for our annual uh, engineering and tech career conference. This is Deal or No Deal with Marvin Lopez. My name is Mike Harris. I am with the Career Center. I'm a career counselor and I support engineering and physical science, uh, physical sciences students. So um, great to have you with us um, this evening. So as I said, this is our uh, last session that we'll be doing for our conference this year. Um, you'll see on the screen the agenda for our previous sessions that we had since Monday. Some really, uh, oh, sorry, some really good sessions with some great information. Uh, hopefully you were able to join us, but even if you weren't, these sessions were all recorded, just like this one is being recorded. And we'll put this on our YouTube uh, channel in a few days. So you can access there to see uh, information from, um, from what our panelists shared in those previous sessions. Um, this session uh, is all about offer negotiation. Um, so if you are either uh, in that process or anticipate being in that process, this is gonna be pretty useful for you. Uh, at the end of the session, you will receive um, a poll, uh, sorry, a survey um, from the Career Center on your experience, but I know Marvin also has a, a poll that he's going to be, he's going to be delivering. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Marvin Lopez, the Director of Student Programs for the uh, for Engineering Student Services. Uh, yep, Marvin, take it away. All right. Thank you, Mike, and thank you all, and good afternoon. Thank you for taking the time to be here with us. And yes, I am the last session in the series, so Thank you for sticking with the programs and I hope you find them useful. So I will share my screen and start the presentation. So this is deal or no deal, negotiating job offers. And while I'll be sharing a lot of information, um, I, I'd like to make it as engaging as possible, interactive as possible. So please get, ask questions in the, in the Q&A box. Mike will monitor it and we will address questions as they come up. So with that, let's take it away. So Marvin Lopez, as Mike mentioned, Director of Student Programs in Engineering Student Services. That's me here. I'm from LA. So for those of you and uh, those of you from, from LA, I'm from the San Gabriel area. I'm also an engineer. So my background is computer science and engineering from a different UC that you see a picture of there. And I'm a product of the MESA program for many, many years ago, the Math Engineering Science Achievement, and also a lifetime member of the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. So. Um, so most of my career has been in industry up until five and a half years ago when I came to campus. Um, I've been in a number of companies you see there where I started as an engineer and um, moved over to recruiting and diversity programs over the years, in particular running the university recruiting programs at, um, at all the companies you see here, where I was in charge of the hiring um, around the world for, in particular in Tune and AMD, for co-ops, interns, and new hires. So I've not only hired personally a number of students over the years, but also managed the programs to do that. So I've been through this process quite a bit on the other side, making the offers and considering uh, counter offers and negotiations. So I know a little bit about this world that I'd like to share with you tonight. And I'm now at Engineering Student Services where I'm in charge of all the programs um, in Engineering Student Services like leadership and the etiquette dinners that we have and that we will be bring back soon, the tutoring center and the Center for Access to Engineering Excellence and many, many more. So we hope to see you there soon. Okay, so today we'll talk, uh, we'll cover why negotiate, first of all, why negotiate a job offer, the elements um, that make up job offers, factors to consider um, as you consider your, your job offers, uh, do's and don'ts in negotiating job offers, a quick word about deadlines and guidelines especially, um, accepting and declining and the difference in the two, some final thoughts, uh, some resources, and I have a section here about questions, but I really wanted to, as I said, make it a conversation more than anything. So as questions come up, uh, if question, you know, the topic spurs a question, please um, put it in the, in the Q&A box. Mike will monitor that and will let me know that we have a question. So let's take it away. All right, so first of all, this workshop will be successful if you walk away more knowledgeable about evaluating job offers and more confident about negotiating job offers. So. At the end of this whole process, we'll see if we've achieved our goal. All right. So first of all, why negotiate? You want to negotiate because you want to achieve a win-win arrangement, a win-win um, deal. You want to uh, achieve a, a deal that makes both you and the employer happy, which means that they get uh, an employee, a resource that is happy, that is um, that gets what you're looking for, that has a path, not just 
uh, salary and, uh, and a bonus, but it has a path forward with this organization for the long term. And you get the same thing, that you get uh, a position that is a, is, career, is a career for some period of time that has all the things that you're looking for, not just the money and the salary, but for the long term. So that's what they're looking for in terms of a, that's what win-win looks like. But first off, before we talk about details, some things right off the bat. Many elements of, the, of a job offer are negotiable. So don't think that only the salary is negotiable or that nothing is negotiable. So many elements are negotiable. The key is to a point, there's limits to all the things you can negotiate and we'll talk about some of those and with whom, and this is very important that with whom you negotiate. For those of you that have been through the process, you know what I'm talking about. For those of you that have not been through the process very often, your manager, others, somebody other than human resources might um, engage with you and, and the negotiation. And because they want you and they want to they want to get you, they'll offer things that they can't deliver. So, you know, I've seen this many times where managers, hiring managers will offer bonuses and perks that they can't deliver, that they simply can't do because of policy and guidelines. So be careful that those that you negotiate are the ones that can in fact deliver what they promise, namely HR. So the human resources is really your recruiter is ultimately who can say yes or no to things. So be very careful. Let's see, Wi-Fi problems again. Yes, of course, Wi-Fi problems again. They want you. So keep in mind that by making you an offer, they've stated that they want you to join this organization. So leverage that power that you've now gained by they, by they stating that they want you. So this is a two-way conversation where yes, you wanna impress them, you've already impressed them, and now they need to impress you by providing the things that you're looking for and by having a conversation about making you happy and arriving at that win-win negotiation or that win-win arrangement. So the fact that they made you an offer means they want you. So leverage that. Very important that you get it in writing. If it's not in writing, it does not exist. You can get all kinds of things on the phone, even text, but what counts is the, is the actual offer in a letter, in a PDF, by email or, you know, or an attachment. Um, if it's not in writing, it does not exist. So be very careful that you're accepting something that is only in writing. And we'll talk about that um, what that looks like in a minute, but it's only in writing. And of course, my favorite and Mike's favorite is that never renege on an offer. And by that, I mean, once you accepted it, it's yours. However, I add the caveat that almost never renege. There are times when companies get overly eager in putting you in a corner where your only solution is to accept um, and then possibly renege later. But it's very extremely rare that you would ever do that. On the whole, never renege. Why is that bad? Companies, there is such a thing as a sort of do not hire list where if you're an egg, you can be put on that, on that do not hire list where companies, you know, in particular internally, will pass around to the recruiters to not bring in people that renege. Um, I always tell the, the story of a, of a couple of students that we had once at one of my companies where we, ex we're, we expected these two students on day one of orientation and they didn't show up and we we're actually very concerned that something might have happened. And then around lunchtime, they sent us both, you know, they're, they're tight buddies. They sent us an email saying, oh, sorry, we decided to go to another company, but thank you very much and uh, apology. Um, need, needless to say, they ended up on the do not, do not hire list because we lost out on two positions. We lost out on two candidates we could have had for this position and they caused other students to lose out on opportunities. So do not do that, do not renege. Um, though we understand there are, there are extreme, extremely rare cases where that may be necessary. So um, just putting that caveat out there. Okay, so first, um, as you go through your careers and as engineers, as uh, technical experts that you are, you will probably first have an internship or a co-op. So these are the elements of a job offer um, as interns or co-ops. And, Of course, it takes two. Okay, the basics of, the, of a job offer. So, uh, and the things that are in bold are generally things that you can negotiate. The other things that are either you know, fixed or just not negotiable. Uh, the job title, of course, which will typically be intern or co-ops of, of some sort. The salary, which generally for uh, an intern or co-op will be hourly, not monthly, but uh, sometimes it is monthly. The start date, so you're, you know, when you'll start your position. The duration, whether it's eight, 10, 12 weeks, or six months in case of a co-op. Uh, the location where you'll be, um, 
now companies are starting to open up and you may be actually in person for next summer. We hope that you'll actually be in person. The manager's name, of course, your division, department, and that's usually fixed. And of course, the deadline for accepting or declining, that should be in your offer. And contingencies, things like uh, background check, uh, drug, you know, drug check, whatever, uh, security check, depending on the organization. So all the contingencies that you just can't, you can't change. And then the other sort of add-ons to an, an intern offer are whether you'll have a mentor uh, as part of this, um, your internship, whether you have a buddy, and there's a difference in those two. A mentor is somebody that has a more formal relationship with you and has a structured approach to your their, their relationship with you. Whereas a buddy is, is literally that, somebody who's just kind of your buddy to show you the, how things are done in this company, you know, where the copier is at and the printer and all that sort of thing. Whether you're part of an intern program, an actual structured program, or simply an intern that's working in that department, any vacation that you might get as an intern, which usually you don't, any relocation they might pay if uh, as an intern, you, they again, typically don't, but sometimes they do. Um, and housing, whether you'll be provided either housing itself or a stipend for housing. And these are the things that are included. Again, these are not bolded because these are typically not negotiable. If you have one, great. If you don't, you don't. Uh, but the things that again are negotiable are things like the salary, the start date, the duration, the location, and the deadline, especially for accepting. So. Um, any questions, Mike, so far? No, nope, nothing yet. All right, moving right on. Now for a full-time offer. Of course, this is where you're all headed and you will receive a full-time offer at some point and you'll probably receive multiple job offers because you're all Berkeley engineers and everybody wants you. These are the elements of a full-time offer. Again, the job title, whether it's a contract position or not, and this is very important to know. Sometimes, and very often actually, more, more often than not, companies are hiring students and new hires first as a, on a contract basis, either directly or through a third party. Because as a contract position, you can be, it can be eliminated basically overnight. And so it, it's sort of a trial, you know, a trial period. And so they may bring you in as a contract or not. It should be very clearly stated in the offer. The salary, um, the start date, the location, which are of course, can be negotiable, especially for full-time. Again, your manager's name, division, department, all that. The deadline, that's also negotiable. There may be and probably will be a probation period. So this is a time during which you'll be evaluated and should any, any concerns arise, you can be terminated uh, much more easily than once you pass the probation period. Uh, it should say whether it's a rotation or not. And I know many, many students out there have been part of it offered rotational programs where you rotate among different departments and different roles for some period of time. And so that should be clearly stated in the offer. And again, contingencies, background checks, security checks, um, drug checks, all that sort of thing. And then there's the add-ons, um, sign-on bonuses, which can be sort of negotiable. Stock options, similarly, can be negotiable. Um, relocation, moving expenses uh, for full-time offers are usually included and it's often fixed. Um, your hours, whether you'll be working, you know, open hours, flex time, and also a performance review. There should be somewhere in the, in the job offer, at, the, at least a, a mention of how you'll be um, reviewed, what, what's your performance review process will be, whether it's uh, six months, yearly, you know, et cetera. There should be some mention of that. And those kind of things are not negotiable, but the sign-up bonus, the stock options, deadline, location, start date, and salary are negotiable or can be negotiable. And then there's all the, all the fun stuff, all the, the perks, benefits, um, whether you have vacation or a sabbatical, sick leave, a health plan, retirement, um, ESP is employee stock purchase plan is when you, you can buy stocks in the, in the company at a discount. Um, a bonus, so, you know, companies usually have a bonus, annual bonus, and that should be spelled or can be sometimes spelled in the, in the offer. Tuition reimbursement, for those of you going back or thinking of going back to a master's or PhD, um, it could be included in the offer. Um, fitness centers, commission, travel, again, a mentor program, training programs, transit allowance, sometimes companies pay for, um, for parking, uh, for public transportation, et cetera. All the perks you hear about, you know, there you have free food, laundry, pet insurance, all the great things you hear about that should all be included somewhere, if not in the actual offer on a link to a website. But these are things that are not negotiable. That what they have is what they have and it is what it is, so. Questions? 
Nope, not yet. Students, right. if you have any questions, put them in the Q&A. Okay, carrying right on. Apologies for the lag. Okay, so now, as you consider these offers, and in particular, and it doesn't matter if it's one offer or multiple offers, there's some factors that I suggest you, uh, you think about in considering the offers. Um, these are not all created equal. These are whatever matter, you know, what, what matters to you in your own, um, whatever is important to you, but things that you should consider. Of course, uh, money. And by that, I don't just mean the salary, but the sum, uh, what they call the total compensation package. So your salary, bonus, uh, sign on bonus, stock options, et cetera. The, the sum total of the compensation uh, included in the offer. The role that you'll have. So the actual title, the role you'll, you'll perform, whether it's, you know, let's say a, um, a developer versus testing versus QA versus design, what exactly is the role? Whether it's a rotation or not, is that something you care about? Like to join a, a, come in as a rotation, on a rotational basis. The project will be on, right? Some projects are more exciting than others. The company size, do you care to work in a small company, a medium-sized company? The industry, the values of the company, and these are stated through the website, but also through the um, news, um, items about the company. So sometimes they're not necessarily stated by the company, but it's what other people are saying about the company. The social impact, do you care the social impact of this organization, the culture of the company, the department, the division, the leadership? Um, do you care who is in charge of this company and what they're saying about them, what's being said about them out there? The diverse, not just the diversity of the company itself, the makeup of the company, but their commitment to diversity, their uh, the actions around diversity, is that something that matters to you? Reputation. The financials, um, that's something you should consider um, and how critical it is, it's up to you, but you know, is this company financially viable? Are they growing? Are they you know, stable? Are they stagnant? Growth opportunities, you know, there's opportunities for growing in, internally to move up, to move around. Is there travel involved? And I put it in italics because of course right now um, we're not traveling much. Some companies are traveling, some are not. But if it's important to you that you travel, is that, you know, is that included? Or conversely, if you don't want to travel and there's lots of travel involved, is that something important to you? The people that you'll be in, that is absolutely critical. Work-life balance. Um, there's lots of definitions for this, but basically, are we able to have a personal life outside of work? And as, as you're expected to work 80s, you know, 50, 60, 80 hours a week, all the perks, are the perks important to you that you get, you know, a free haircut and food and all the other things you hear about? And of course, location. Um, are you interested in, you know, are you willing to go anywhere? Are you only interested in staying in the Bay Area, California, the West Coast? So things that you can, that you might consider as you, um, as you can, factors you consider as you evaluate all your job offers. And so a tool you might consider, oh, sorry, before that. So think about this. So uh, we won't do the, the reflecting, in, reflecting in journal, but something for you to think about is of these factors that I just mentioned, what are the three to five that are critical to you? Meaning that if this job offer does not include this one thing, I wouldn't consider it. Whether it's location, whether it's uh, the money, what are the three things that matter to you? And rank them from one to five or one to three. What are the three absolutely critical things that matter to you? And think about why. So, you know, not just the rank them, but why. Why is this thing, are these things important? And we won't share, but take a, you know, take a moment later uh, to share with your buddies about why these three things are important, these five things. And use a tool, something like this. Um, as I said, I'm an engineer, so I love spreadsheets and I love tables. And create a simple spreadsheet or a simple table like this that has your priorities on the left and your offers on the right and compare them this way. So offer one, as you can see in the example here, has three of your top five, but the three middle ones. Offer three has your top two, but it's only two. So what's more important to you? That it include the top two, or to include your middle three. And that is something that, you know, no one can tell you what to choose. It's something that you would have to discuss with yourself, with your friends, your family, those that matter to you, that you love and that you trust about what makes sense for you to accept. And, you know, this is a, it's not a science, it's an art. So whatever your, your gut, your, um, your thinking tells you is what, but at least you have this tool to kind of guide you through that conversation. Of course, this is predicated on ideally getting these offers at the same time. And this is a challenge and uh, that uh, offers don't always come at the same time. But assuming they do, you can choose this approach. Um, we can use this approach to um, evaluate your offers. 
Marvin, we have a question. Yes. Can you renegotiate an offer after accepting? Generally, no. Once it's yours, it's yours. Um, now, well, let me give you the, the, the short answer is no. Generally, once you've accepted, um, it's done. Certainly things like the financials, um, the location, um, things that are truly fixed, you can't. The start date, for example, or the, even the location, let's say something comes up and you know, family emergency or some other thing and your start date needs to change, that you, know, you can almost negotiate up until the last or at least you know, discuss up, up until the, you know, the, the beginning, right before you start. Let's say location, again, a family emergency keeps you from you know, moving to a particular place you can bring that up, but generally no. Once you've you've signed, it's yours. Does that help? Yeah, something I would add there that I've, I mean, let me come up with more. Um, I heard a student do this and I thought it was a really good idea. And this was during last year during the pandemic when you know companies were kind of struggling a little bit financially and the salary was low. You can negotiate to renegotiate in six months, right? So as part of your as part of your offer, yes. your salary will be renegotiated in six months versus a year, which is generally when you'd be evaluated, right? So rather than wait a year to potentially get a raise, that you could negotiate that uh, that'll happen after six months. That's right. But I would the, the only caveat I would give to that is that again, be careful who can actually follow through on that because mm -hmm. the recruiter can say yes, even your manager can say yes. And then you change managers when you arrive and they're not obligated to fall, to come through with that. So be very careful. You know, that's a, it's a tricky one, but yes, that's, a, that's another option. So, uh, but generally, you know, on the whole, no, once you've signed, it's yours and the terms are yours. So you've accepted the terms and you're, and you move on. So thank you for the question. All right. So quick uh, negotiating do's and don'ts. And this is really important to keep in mind. Some do's. Uh, negotiate by Zoom or by phone, at least by phone, meaning have a conversation. So that is not by email. This is not a, a, by text. You ca it can be done. I've seen people do it, but preferably do it by Zoom or by phone because yeah, this is a conversation you're having with um, this organization that you're about to enter into a relationship, really. So you want to have that conversation about what's, you know, what, what's important to them, what's important to you. Obviously, in person, we'd be even better, but you know, those days are long gone. But not by phone and definitely not by text. Or sorry, not by email and definitely not by text. Be positive and enthusiastic, right? Be, be excited about this opportunity, the fact that you might be joining this organization for whatever reason. Be confident in what you offer, what you bring, your experience, your passions, your aptitudes, your strengths. Be grateful in the sense that you'll know, be grateful that you have this opportunity to contribute to their, uh, their goals and to join them to jointly make a difference. Be factual. So whatever you bring up, um, be truthful and factual, whether it's you know, salary data, whether it's um, reasons why you need um, a change, be factual. Do your research, and I'll, we'll talk about resources for that, but do your research as to why you think a certain salary is, um, is better or other, whatever you know, data you bring in, um, do your research and don't, don't just wing it. Um, this is also important. Prioritize and address all your needs together. So if you need to address three questions about your, uh, your job offer, whether it's the location, the salary and your start date, discuss them all together and prioritize. So if the salary is more important, take that first, then address location, then address the start date, but don't have three calls for three separate things. We, recruiters do not like being called for three separate conversations for three separate topics when you can all discuss them all at once. Um, they're, on, they're separate, so you address them as you go. Um, you might have a follow-up for any of them, but this, uh, treat them all together. Know your breaking point. So if you know that you cannot work at location X, you simply won't go there. Or you know that you, cannot, uh, you will not take this job for less than X. So if that is, um, if you, you do not reach that point, know what your breaking point is and, know, and be comfortable to walk away if, that, if it gets to that point. Conversely, be mindful of the other party. So recruiters and companies, as big as they may be and as seemingly wealthy as they may be, have constraints. And in particular, recruiter has constraints as to what they can offer, um, what they can do for you. So be mindful of what their party and the constraints that they're under in terms of, you know, and all the elements of deadlines, funding, et cetera. And very important, think of the big picture. This is not just about money. So when, when we think of job offer, what people always think is the money. It is not just the money. You're negotiating an offer to join this organization for a career of some, of some duration. 
which means you're getting compensation, you're getting oppor you know, development opportunities, you get to contribute. So think of the big picture, not just literally the salary and the bonuses and all that. And then some don'ts. Do not, when you have this conversation about, uh, in particular, uh, salary, personal, include personal facts. So if you bought a Ferrari and now your, your, your payments are huge, or you brought 10 dogs from the, uh, from the pound and now you have to buy food for 10 dogs, that is a personal factor. That is not something that they're obligated to support you with. Um, it's great. It's commendable that you brought 10 dogs to support them, but that is not something that they need to know or that they would care about uh, in the conversation. So include uh, factual things, but don't include personal factors that don't belong in this conversation. Don't be combative. This is a, a negotiation does not imply combativeness. It implies conversation. So be, uh, be polite, be grateful, be confident, but don't be combative. At the same time, don't blindly ex accept numbers. And in particular, if, um, if they tell you, well, we'll give you X amount more if you, if you accept the offer today, tomorrow, be wary of that. So if, if whatever number they give you, ask, you know, the deadline still apply and ask if you, you, know, you will take it back and consider no matter what, even if it's what you wanted, um, don't accept it blindly. Don't negotiate for its own sake. I've had many candidates in my time and, and some students who negotiate purely to negotiate. And you can tell when there's like picking things just to find, just to negotiate. You know, at some point, if it's got what you want, just let it, you know, take it back and accept it or not. But don't just negotiate for its own sake and definitely don't come back for more. You know, if you got one thing, don't bring up something else. And this last point I want to make is do not give away intelligence unless it benefits you. And by that, I mean, you are not obligated to disclose who else, what other offers you have, with whom, for how much, or any of that, unless you, it benefits you. So um, in fact, some cities and some states are now forbidding companies to ask for information like that, either what your current salary is or what your current role is, because what this conversation should be is about you and this company or this organization, what you bring to this, uh, this position, this role, and not what anybody else is offering you or what anybody else is doing for you and with you. So this is purely between you and them. Uh, but if it benefits you to bring in other information, great. If you have no other offers, that's thing I also want to point out, if you have only one offer, don't think that you're beholden to just take whatever they offer you because ultimately, again, this is a, this is a, they're paying you for the role, that you, the, what you bring to this role, independent of anybody else um, offering you whatever money. So your role and your expertise is worth so much in the market and, that's what, and that is what you're negotiating, not what everybody else is giving you. So. Again, unless it benefits you. So be very mindful of that. Questions? Yep, another good one. Uh, right. when, when to negotiate the job offer? Should you do it when you get the call about the offer or can you do it afterwards? I would prefer that you do it when you get the actual written offer because it is not, a, un, um, not unheard of that whatever they tell you on the, they tell you on the phone and you, you might've negotiated on the phone is different than what you get in writing. And so, and what you're negotiating on is what's actually in writing. So make sure that what you get in writing matches what they tell you, but wait till you actually get it in writing. And once you get it in writing, if you have questions and you want to negotiate, do it right away. Do not wait until the last minute. Uh, if it's something that's important to you, do it right away. Don't wait till the day or, you know, two, two days before the deadline. Sound good? Yep, that's good. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, sometimes, you know, you you need to do research, right? So so, right. so listen to what the offer is. Definitely ask for it in writing, like you said. And in the meantime, go do your research. Start to look. That's is right. The salary, is the salary competitive? You know, so. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I can tell you, recruiters do not like to hear, for, you know, get a call on the day before it's due or even, and, and I've seen this, on the day it's due and say, by the way, I have a question. I, I want to talk about the, my offer. Um because they have to go probably talk to people internally to potentially offer you something different. And they're of course under their own deadlines. And so that puts them on a bind. And of course that's less likely for you to get what you're looking for. So uh, don't push it. So wait, don't wait till the last minute. Yeah. All and right. There's, a, and we, there's another question. Oh, thank you, Mike. Um, another one is, um, and you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but you know, how do you phrase the request and, and students asking like, could they just go with another candidate who's not negotiating? Ne negotiating. So could negotiating um, jeopardize the offer? No, 
um, nego- it's expected that you'll negotiate, in fact. So uh, recruiters, companies know that you will likely or possibly negotiate. Again, as I said, they want you. So they, by giving you an offer, they've stated that, you know, they formally said, we want you. So they will talk to you and, um, and, and they will work with you on whatever concerns or, you know, uh, questions you might have about the offer and negotiations. Now, if they won't, if they're not open to negotiate, they sh- they'll tell you right away. And usually companies will say, you know, the offer is final and that's it. And if you bring up a question, they'll, you know, they'll basically squash the conversation right away and, um, and, you know, and leave it at that. But simply broaching the subject will not, um, will not cause to uh, rescind the offer. However, as I mentioned earlier, if you negotiate for its own sake, if you keep negotiating after having, you know, discussed a topic and after, you know, have, having to, you know, have um, negotiated already, if you keep going, then yeah, that can be, they, that can cause, um, the, uh, you know, that, that they might rescind the offer, but it's very rare. You have to be really, it has to be really egregious. Um, there's two cases that I recall, you know, back in my time in corporate um, that we rescinded an offer. One, which is not quite the same as this, but one is that we had the parent of the student negotiating for them. So we have somebody's mom calling us at, you know, negotiating for the student. And then we repeatedly say, well, you know, uh, Miss, Miss Mother, um, please have your student call us and we'll, you know, we'll discuss and then she called back and called back. And then finally said, you know, this is a conversation between, you know, the student and, and us. And I think it's best if we just part ways and we rescinded that offer. And the other is a student that we, you know, kept calling every couple of days asking for something else. You know, first we changed the deadline, then we changed the time, then we changed the numbers. And, you know, it clearly was a negotiation for its own sake. And so we rescinded that as well. But it's very rare. It, you know, it, if, you, if you don't go to anything, you know, egregious like that, they know that they expect you to negotiate. In fact, they like it when you negotiate because it, sounds, it shows that you're, you're vested in your, in your future and they won't rescind the offer for that. So don't think that negotiating is bad at all. But again, within reason and done well. All right, so let's talk about deadlines. And we talked a, a little bit about this at the very beginning. So here's how the, the deadlines slash guidelines work. Professional courtesy, so purely professional courtesy in the, in the recruiting world um, is usually two weeks. So the society, um, of human resources management, uh, other organizations will, you know, have as a guideline for professionals in the recruiting world of two weeks. So at the least, you should get two weeks um, to consider. Um, our campus guidelines, so the Career Center has an agreement, or at least um, expresses um, our, or in parts on our, our corporate partners that come to the Career Center, um, a request for a three weeks from the offer. So whenever the offer comes in, that they give you three weeks to consider. In the College of Engineering, we have our own guideline that we ask recruiters that specifically recruit engineers and LNSCS students, uh, at least in the fall, uh, for a, a deadline of November 1st or two weeks from the dead, whichever is later. So let's say if an offer comes in late October, we ask that they give you till you know, late-ish, November, um, early November. However, these are guidelines that the companies can choose to abide. And so they will choose whatever is best for them. And so they often, they, they will choose the, the three-week offer, um, the three-week from offer through the Career Center. Sometimes they'll, they'll choose our guideline on November 1st, but ultimately they get to choose, you know, what guideline they want to pursue. Um, and ultimately there's not a whole lot that we can hold over them to make them, you know, follow the COE guideline, even the campus guideline. So, you know, be mindful of that. Uh, but at the least, we want you to, to be mindful that they should be giving you at least two weeks preferably the three weeks and even better till November 1st. And they should not be giving you exploding offers of you know, two days over the weekend. But, and if you do, let us know because that is not professional behavior. So if they're giving you, they're pressuring you into accepting something or, and, and I've seen it happen over the weekend and two days, let us know. And we we're glad to have a conversation with the, with the employer about that because that is not professional behavior. So questions about deadlines or Mike, anything to add? Um, yeah, well, there, there was a question about um, is it okay to request for a longer deadline uh, or a longer deadline, which I think you you have um, covered. Um, okay. Another question is um, if we if you do ask for an extension, do you have to give a reason for it? Generally, yes, you should give a reason. Um, 
But you know, the most basic reason, which is a, a completely valid reason, is that this is in particular for a full-time position. Um, you know, this is a, a, a truly critical juncture in your life. This is a major decision. And so you want ample time to decide and choose amongst all your options and discuss with your support network of what, you know, what to decide. And so the, at the least, there's that factor of, of you need time to make a decision. But if there's other, um, other factors involved, um, whatever they may be, you should. Um, and you should explain why. So you shouldn't ask for a deadline, you know, an extension simply, be, you know, just because. Um, so there should be some reason why um, you, need to, uh, you need more time. So, and and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. And it should also be reasonable. So you shouldn't ask for, you know, two months, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks. Um, you know, that, that's typically not unheard of. And it's typically not unheard of that they'll, that they'll give you. But a month and beyond, very likely, and I, I can't imagine that a company would give you um, a whole month more than the original deadline. Again, the, our own guideline for the College of Engineering is on our website. So if anybody asks, well, where does it say that? It's right there. Um, but again, it's a guideline that we ask companies to, um, to abide by. And uh, we hope they do to give you that proper time. And if they don't, I, you know, it is a guideline. So it's not a, certainly not a policy that we can truly enforce. One thing I'd add about the um, giving a reason, it, it works both ways. If you have an offer on the table and you're also busy interviewing with another company, you should you should communicate with both. You should tell the company yes. that has the offer, like, hey, can you extend it because I'm busy interviewing and go back to the company you're interviewing to say, hey, I have an offer on the table. Can you expedite your process? Um, so That's right. you know, be upfront with both. And actually, you can use one to kind of improve your situation with the other. That's right. Absolutely. Transparency is best. Uh, what it serves you. Thank you. Okay, so negotiating an extension. And this is a very timely, timely reason or timely uh, topic. Explain why. Again, as Mike just mentioned, give it, you know, give a reason or, or a sense of why you want an explanation of uh, what an extension. Be reasonable. So, you know, two weeks, a week is, is not unheard of and it's, it's a reasonable request. A month and beyond is, is very unlikely that they will decline or very likely that they will decline. Again, share as appropriate. So if, it, if it's useful for you to share that you have a, an offer already in, um, in hand for what it, with whatever deadline, and that will spur the other company to come up with their decision, you can share. Again, express gratitude. So don't be demanding about this. You know, express gratitude, be enthusiastic. And again, over the phone, have a conversation about this, you know, not by email and certainly not by text because that comes across as a demand, not a conversation. And it can be something as simple as this. I'm delighted to receive an offer from your company, whatever that may be. I think it's a great fit for my fit and my passion and skills. Is an important decision. I like to be thorough and deliberate. Can I get back to you by X, Y, Z date? And offer something specific. So don't just say, can I get more time? Be specific. Can I get back to you by whatever date? And you know, they may say yes or no. And again, you could say that the, the however part could be, you know, as Mike just mentioned, however. I have an offer from another organization and they need a decision by X date. Is it possible that you can give me you know, um, ad additional time? So, um, you know, keep it simple, uh, keep it enthusiastic and grateful and things do happen. Uh, negotiating salaries similarly, explain why. And again, not because you, you know, bought an expensive car or you're, you know, you have a penthouse all of a sudden, but there's, um, You've done your research and there's factors that you bring and the things that you bring to the organization and why you think that the salary is different, should be different. Again, be reasonable. So, you know, that's, a, again, there's more of a, uh, an art than a science, but typically 10% difference from what they originally offered is, is reasonable. You know, if you ask for 30, 50% more, that's very unlikely they'll say no. Again, share is appropriate. So if it's useful for you to share that company X is offering you more, then bring it in. If it's not useful, then you don't feel, don't feel like you have to. You know, companies always like to know if, if their competitor is offering you more and that their competitor is, um, is trying to attract you with even more, that could be useful, but don't feel obligated to share that. Again, express gratitude, be enthusiastic, and over the phone, especially the salary conversation, over the phone, not by phone or not by email or by text. And again, an example of how you could do this, I'm excited to receive an offer to join the company. It's a great fit for my passion. I do feel a salary is lower than I expected based on my research, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and my background, you know, what you bring, whether it's your GPA, 
the fact that you have an internship experience, you know, with them or somebody else, other uh, potential offers, would you consider a range of, and this is a little trait that I offer, consider a range, of, you know, offer a range. So don't just offer a number, offer a range from high to low. And so say the high number first. So would you consider a range from 95 to 85? Because the first number that they hear is a number that will stick in their head. So when they think, uh, you know, when they think of you, they'll think of the high number, not the low number. And so they're more likely to give you something closer to a high number than the low number. So that's one. By the same token, when you give this number, this range, make sure that the low number you offer is a number that you would live with. Because if you offer something, if you offer a low number and you're in fact not, would not be happy with that number, then they might just give you that number and assume that you're okay with that. And then if you come back and say, well, I didn't really mean it, I meant this other number, then things can get a little dicey. So make sure that that low is something you can live with and make sure that the high is a reasonable number. And we'll talk about that, where you can find what those ranges are. But there's a little trick to, for you to have that conversation with the recruiter or, and, and ideally the recruiter. I'll pause for a minute for any questions. No. Nope. Okay. All right, and then accepting and declining. This is the fun part. So accepting, this is the fun, right? The, this is the, the, the goal of this entire process is for you to accept the offer. So when you accept, sign it and return it by the deadline. So either um, most likely a PDF or some sort of DocuSign, keep a copy. If it's an attachment, obviously you have a copy. And this is really important. Let others know that you're withdrawing from consideration. So once you've signed it and you've, you've completed the process with, with a company, let others know that you may be in touch, you know, in conversations with that you're no longer in consideration. This is, uh, you know, this is a, a, a polite thing to do, not only for them, but for your peers that may also be in, the, in consideration. And now uh, by you withdrawing, you open that door for them. So let others know that you're withdrawing. And then declining when you're turning down an offer. This is the one uh, where it is better by email so that you don't have to explain lots of things over the phone because they'll want to know lots of you know they'll have questions for you if you do it by phone so it's best to do it by email and just keep it short and sweet um where you express gratitude again short and sweet no need to share the details um but simply that you decided to pursue another opportunity you look forward to staying in touch and um and thank you again and that's it don't 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 make it too complicated don't overthink it and again declinings are better by email so that you have to get into a conversation explaining all kinds of things because recruiters will want to know who did you accept with, what they give you, et cetera. And then they get to this awkward situation of you having to share or potentially wanting to share more than you need to or want to. So questions about these? Okay. All right. Uh, and again, do not renege. So once you accepted it, it's yours. Again, I mentioned that there are very extreme cases where you, you might consider that, but ultimately, do not renege because they do call me, they do call Mike, and they do call the career center saying, hey, your students are reneging on our offers. If this continues, and I've had these very conversations, if this continues, we won't recruit with you. So don't put your peers in a bad position. Don't renege. That's uh, it's the, the best policy. Simply don't renege. Some final thoughts. Um, Keep the big picture in mind. So this is not just an offer for a you know for a salary. This is a, you know it's not a transactional uh, arrangement. This is a, a relationship you're entering with this organization for some period of time. So think that think of that big picture. It's not forever, right? The days of people working at the company they started with were five, 10, 20 years is long gone. So don't think that you're beholden to this company forever. From here on out, it's on them to keep you happy. And it's on you to deliver what they expect you. So that could take two years. That could be 10 years. But don't think that you're, you're, you're doing something forever. Um, again, it's the job that matters, the overall, or the overall job and position, not the offer per se. Be confident in whatever you ask and whatever you're, you're after. Be confident in how you do it and when you do it. Reach out to all of us. We're here collectively to support you. The Career Center, myself, my team, my office, all of us in the college. Um, don't do this. Don't navigate this alone. If you're not inclined to navigate it alone, if you've done, if you haven't done this before, we are here for you. And I know it sounds weird, but have fun with it. Um, this will land you at a great place, no matter what. So have fun with it. You know, the lighter, the the looser you are about the the, the process, the better you'll uh, the the better you'll be in it. So um, as weird as that sounds, have fun with it, and it'll all work out. Some resources. 
Of course, uh, the Career Center has some amazing resources across all these things, all these topics from, um, from elevator pitch all the way to the job offer. Um, and you see here, you know, Fast Web has some, HR, et cetera. There's lots of, lots of uh, tips out there for negotiating uh, job offers. Um, the HBR ones I particularly like, the, Har the Harvard Business Review, the 15 rules for negotiating a job offer and how to evaluate, accept, reject, and negotiate a job offer. Those are really, really good. So check those out. Um, and again, I mentioned resources and in particular for salaries. Now, let me tell you the, the, the truth about salaries is that the only people that really, really know salaries is HR, right? Because they have studies from, uh, from Hewitt and other companies that get real salaries from other companies that, have, you know, that, that give, you the true, give them the true intelligence. So everything else out there is self-reported, right? So salary.com, salary LinkedIn, Glassdoor, everything is self-reported. So it's basically, you know, it's like Yelp. So what often happens is when you go to these, these websites, there's people that are really delighted about their, their salaries, they'll post, and people that perhaps are less than happy about their salaries will post and talk about it. In the middle, you know, you, you'll see less. And so you tend to see the, the bookends when it comes to salaries in all these places. So take those with a grain of salt because they're not necessarily truly accurate of the, of the, the salary landscape for any particular company. So, um, so explore them all and see where you land. Now, this last one that I put here, the Educate to Career, that's one website that I do use a lot that is, is actually built, was actually built by an engineer precisely for this purpose, for, uh, to help students kind of understand the, the salary landscape using actual labor department data. And so, um, when you go through it and you answer all these all the questions for a job, it does give you a pretty accurate range, and it is a range for a position in your particular location. So um, I highly encourage you to use it. I found it fairly accurate and gives you a good sense of what the the landscape of the salary landscape looks like in for your type of the position you're after in the location you're interested, and in, based with you know with real data. So and the others, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Other questions. Uh, no, no more questions. I, I just wanted to uh, underline what you said previously about, you know, this is a big decision, but it's not that they will, be, students will be making this decision multiple times in their career. That's right. Um, so, and their, their negotiating power will increase as they go through their career too. So just know that, um, you know, you get to do this one time, but then you will get better at it as you go through your career. That's right. Um, right. Oh, hang on. there is a quick question here. Okay. Uh, any, any advice for not feeling slightly bad for your recruiter after declining an offer? Any advice for not feeling bad after declining? Oh, um, I mean, I guess the short answer is don't. <laughs> you know, they're it's part of the job for them. It goes with yeah, it goes with the territory. Okay, so this is um, it's not a, you're, you're not making a personal decision. You're not. This is not a reflection on the recruiter, right? You're not. You're not saying no to the recruiter. You're saying no to this particular opportunity at this particular company at this particular time, because it could well be, as Mike just mentioned, that two, three years, five years from now, you'll be back in touch with this company for a professional opportunity as, a, as an experienced professional. So they're used to it, first of all. Um, in fact, you know, for every job they have, they'll make an offer and you know, a good number of them will be the client. So that's it's part of the territory. You know, as um, as Godfather says, and it's something that I always uh, that I treasure in terms of uh, life life lessons as a Godfather, it's not personal; it's business, and it is true. This is a, it's not a personal decision. You're not; it's not a reflection on the recruiter. This is simply a decision you're making for you to enter this relationship with this organization. And if you say no, they know they know how it works. So don't feel bad; they won't feel bad. Um, and you know, again, be grateful, stay in touch, and you never know. You might be in touch with them, you know, with them three, five years from now. Also, interestingly, the recruiting world is very small. And it's interesting that a recruiter in company X may well be in company Y tomorrow, and you'll be talking to them at a different place. And so, you know, stay in touch with them, you know, keep, in, you know, keep that relationship, but don't feel bad because it, that's part of the job. You're not making a personal relation, you know, a personal, um, it's not a, it's reflecting personally on the recruiter. It's, you know, it's a decision that you make on all the factors that I just mentioned that's best for you. So, but from a recruiting perspective, thank you for having a heart for them because, you know, it is, it can be a little, so they, you know, they, they also want to have you, you know, come to the company, but, you know, it's what's best for you that matters. 
great question. Okay, uh, well, any additional questions as we're about to close? That's it. All right. Okay, so I told you at the beginning that um, I offered you to, to see um, that this uh, workshop would be successful if we do these two things. So was the workshop successful? And I know it wasn't quite a workshop because you know with the Zoom thing, it doesn't quite work, but do you feel more knowledgeable and more confident about negotiating job offers? So Mike, you wanna launch the poll and see yeah. what people tell us? Oh, Marvin, good results for you. <laughs> All right, waiting for one more person. Come on, there we go. Okay, 15 out of 15. There we go. There you go, Marvin. Okay, all right. Cool. Look at that. Excellent. Okay. And this is not a substitute for the survey you're about to get. So please, you know, fill that out and tell us more about what we could do differently, better. But delighted that this, uh, at least this immediate workshop was useful and giving you some knowledge and some confidence about job offers. Um, again, just be yourselves, be enthusiastic, and things will happen. And thank you. Yep. Thanks, Marvin. Really appreciate it. Um, like you said, there will be a survey after, uh, as you end the, the session, please fill that out. There's a quick question that came in from Karen. Is it appropriate to keep in touch with your recruiter if you rejected an offer from them? Yes, it's appropriate Absolutely. And, and encouraged, for sure. Yes. In fact, um, thank you for that question. When you decline the offer, offer or ask if you can stay in touch on LinkedIn. Um, similarly with your manager, right? So if you, if you're, it's a return offer to go back to you as an internship or, you know, full time and you decline it, stay in touch with your manager that you never know. Um, as we just mentioned, you, you'll be making this decision again and you might come across these, these folks down the road. So yeah, this is not a, this is not a permanent rejection forever. This is purely a transaction that you're choosing to enter with somebody else for some reason. And that's okay. That's, that's how the professional work world works. So yeah. nothing personal. Yeah, do stay in touch with them. And Marvin, I know your, some of your slides had some hyperlinks. So I'm going to send, if you could send it to me and then I'll send it out to all That's the right. students so they can access. There were some really good links there. Right. Absolutely. I'll, I'll just share with you right now. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Marvin. Really appreciate your insights. You're welcome. My pleasure. And uh, come see us at the Career Center. Come see us in ESS and um, happy to support you all. Yeah. Have a okay. great day. Thank great you. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.